finally 2020 is about to end but i gotta say as crappy as this year has been for everything else gaming has really leapt forward don't you think now i know there were the big titles open world lovers got sucker punch's long-awaited ghost of tsushima Ubisoft turned into your mom and gave you more chores to do. Some of my favorite JRPGs saw re-releases, albeit in better forms of themselves. We finally saw Valve release Half-Life 3. Crash Bandicoot made a true comeback in a game that makes me want to kill myself. We got some great shooters like Doom Eternal. We got a shitty Resident Evil game. Not like we've not had any of those before. Horizon Zero Dawn finally came to PC, we got a new generation of consoles, and EA still ripped off people with FIFA 18. Wait, what? It was 19? You're sure? No, it was 20. I'm pretty sure it was 20. 21? Are you sure? Okay, okay, okay. I guess it was 21 then. But I gotta say, we had so many indie games this year, it's like everyone had something to play regardless of their personal taste in genre or gameplay style. Now, most of these games I didn't even beat, but I cannot deny my appreciation for them. Games like Ghost Runner, Bullets Per Minute, Exit the Gungeon, Noita, The Adventures of Chris, Risk of Rain 2, Through the Darkest of Times, If Found, Rogue Legacy 2, even John Wick Simulator came up with a sequel. There was also Cockhead. Cockhead was good! You play as a penis! But I finally have a list of indie games that I absolutely loved. Raji. This game is very close to home for so many reasons. I'm from India and seeing an Indian developer become so successful with a debut title like this one, it makes me genuinely happy. Considering this is one of, if not the most recognizable releases from India, it does make me proud. It got nominated for the best debut game at the Game Awards for Pete's sake. This game comes in with one of the most underappreciated legends from Indian mythology. Nodding Head Games have done their best to introduce a culture and narrative to other parts of the world that many, many may be unaware of. This has been a bold and well-developed idea that still remains a little bit rough around the edges. The game does lack a lot of polish, just from an objective standpoint. A lot of enemies lack design variety, many of the attack animations in the game come across as flashy but have no feedback, and some of the voice acting can seem off. What it does do incredibly well is the level design, soundtrack, and art design, which I feel are integral in a game where the visual representation of these massive, Towering V-stars, forts, and temples give you this feeling of insignificance. It is truly somewhat magical. 6 out of 10, definitely worth a play. Alright, Carrion is a game I didn't expect to like at all. But, but, look at this! If you've ever had a supervillain power fantasy, the likes of which you will only see as an opposing force in films like Alien, A Quiet Place and Predator, this is the game for you. You play as a red blob monster alien thing, symbiote maybe? And you have to make your escape through this old science facility. This game has three integral mechanics, traversal, combat and puzzle solving. Surprisingly enough, these two rely on this one. You can essentially pick up dudes with the tentacles, swing them around to break their spine, consume their bodies whole, maybe even half, maybe just their head. I don't know, depends on your appetite. Take over and control humans with parasitic powers and shoot some bitches to death. You move like Jello that's 16 weeks old and definitely, definitely moldy. Might as well throw that out. Shoot webs. I hope they're webs. Out of you that can make enemies stick to shit. The combat possibilities are endless and all of this is owed to some great controls. It's actually very well animated and has some great sound design too. Dark corridors await the trail you leave behind you. Only one light source to guide your way. All you hear are footsteps in the distance as silence befalls you. Your grotesque alien body slithers and slips through each and every crevice, every pipeline and every pool of mutated blood. You lurk, lurk beneath the shadows, beneath the floor grates, only for that one shot when there's an unsuspecting dude right above you to meet his end. For a game with this kind of aesthetic, it is so satisfying.
7 out of 10. Call this Marvel's symbiote carnage and we'll sell it like hotcakes. Okay, serious time. The Pathless. What can I say about The Pathless that hasn't been said before? The developers of Abzu, Giant Squid, have left me stunned and dazed once again. Where Abzu was a relaxing swimming simulator that had you take control of a diver uncovering mysteries of a lost civilization, The Pathless is in a very similar realm of operation visually, but functions very different in the ludic sense. In times where every other major release plays very similarly, The Pathless does something very new. In its own right though. It borrows the best parts from Abzu and goes beyond the confines of just giving you another unsettling world. This time, there is a major focus on two things. Something that Abzu did not have at all. Momentum and combat. And these are so intricately tied together with each other, it's almost like they're codependent mechanics. And that's not to say they're a bad thing, it's great. Because the fast-paced traversal is entirely dependent on your ability to shoot the bow and maneuver through the deep jungles, pits of fire, and some more things I won't spoil here. Every arrow you shoot at a floating target gives you some speed, momentum, and putting this mechanic on repeat lets you dance through these vast, open, desolate landscapes like some hunter ballerina. The Pathless is a very simple game in terms of presentation, with its minimal writing and mainly expository dialogue, but that's okay. It shows you the conflict of this being called the God Slayer and the repercussions of his actions that have left this sanctuary corrupted. The cell shaded look paired with the openness of this cursed world leads to some of the best atmospheric storytelling I've come across this year. And if you're a video game soundtrack buff like me, you can only imagine how perfect the marriage is between Austin Wintry's absolutely gripping score and the fast paced boss fights that you find yourself in. The sound design is once again very, very immersive. Every arrow you shoot whistles with its own accent depending on your proximity to the target, the shot angle and speed. The rustling of the leaves as you run through the jungles, grasslands and the loud angry roars of the foes you face can be spine chilling and enthralling at the same time. The Pathless is a complete experience that took me about 12 hours to finish. That is way too long because I just couldn't stop spending time wandering around these beautiful landscapes and trying out fancy tricks with the really impressive maneuverability mechanics that are here. 8 out of 10, like Shadow of the Colossus meets the Speed Racer. Now I'm someone who has loved puzzle games ever since I was a fucking fetus. So imagine my excitement when a game like Carto released this year. Carto is a game where you play as a clumsy Dora the Explorer girl who isn't a recovering drug addict who talks to animals. Oh wait, no, that actually happens? Okay, you, you play as a little Red Riding Hood reject who basically destroys the world because her magic map has the power to tear through every fragment of reality. Are you sure this game is cute and for kids? I didn't think of this while I was playing. But seriously though, imagine you had a Rubik's Cube made out of paper and it was also a jigsaw puzzle. The central game mechanic is perhaps its only mechanic and that's the magic map. You find pieces of the map and arrange them in specific ways based on visual and audio cues that the world may present to you. And in very rare cases, characters may hint at what you have to do next to solve a certain puzzle. That's Carto in a nutshell. It's a cute little light-hearted adventure of a girl who has to retrieve all the pieces of the map and get back home to her granny. It's got a fun, innocent sense of humor, poppy and joyous soundtrack, an almost moving paper cutout like art style, and a visually stunning color palette. Ever since I've played Undertale, I've wanted a game to show me that nuanced cheer that is present in the simplicity of a game like Carto. Talking to the characters on various islands, involving yourself in their lives, their stories, their struggles, and learning all about the little things that really matter in life has never been so enjoyable. This is a short 6-7 hour adventure and an absolute must play.
8 out of 10 adorable improvisational and stunning all right are you ready for this and the number one best indie game of the year is Ever since I was a little baby playing God of War on the PS2, I loved Greek mythology. The stories of these mythical, legendary, powerful beings the Greeks once worshipped was always fascinating to me. And this time around, who better to bring to life this mythos and this world than Supergiant games themselves? Some of my favourite games of all time are by Supergiant. All of their games are phenomenal. Bastion, Transistor, Pyre, and now adding to their list of accolades is Hades. I have slowly grown to like roguelikes over this year. Risk of Rain 2 was one of the best games I played, but Hades just inched it out of the way. Now you may be asking me, why is that? Well, for every reason under the umbrella of good game design, of course. If you've noticed, each of the games I've mentioned on this list has something new in it. That's mostly because I'm tired of waiting for the AAA developers to put out some inane, repetitive, empty garbage that just wastes my time with over a hundred plus hours of repetitive content. Now, if you're gonna tell me Hades is repetitive, no. I severely, indubitably, and vehemently disagree with you. It's a roguelike, and yet it does most things better than most big budget games. And it succeeds in almost every single way. Apart from the ever-changing labyrinth, it is one of the few roguelike games that has a narrative building constantly with every death and every playthrough. This overarching narrative keeps track of all your character interactions, all character deaths, all the weapons you use, all the abilities you unlocked, all the gods you've sought favors from, all the chthonic deities you've placed over time, enemies and bosses you've fought and conquered in every area and all of the bosses or enemies you have died to. And that isn't even the tip of the iceberg. Each area is so uniquely designed with a distinct hand-drawn art style, carefully written and composed soundtrack, varied enemy presence, design and behavior. It almost feels like a new game on every run. The only difference is you constantly get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until you meet your end and have to start all over again. The voice acting is incredible. The animations are flawless. Like, even in this chaotic battle that you see, there's not a single frame that is flawed in terms of animation and visual quality. I bought this game when it was in early access and saw its trajectory from being a game in its early stages all through completion, release and critical acclaim. Hades is a masterpiece in every single way. 9 out of 10, this one just might be game of the year.